Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the worst fucking podcast you've ever heard. Both mics. Hey, 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 welcome to both mics, everybody. Welcome. Hey, 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 can I get you some chicken today? <laughs> no. The uh, Raisin Cane's drive through window. Nice. What's happening? Nice. What show are we on here? 108? We are on show 108 of Both Mics Heard Everywhere. Podcast can be heard uh, right now live on twitch.tv slash both mics. You can also find video of us on YouTube and Facebook. Find us on any platform you can think of that you can get a podcast. Just look for Both Mics. Go to bothmics.com for more information. Hey. Now back to you, Mike. Yes. Yes. <laughs> real quick, real quick. Yes. We took a break, and uh, I went in the bathroom. And above our commode in the uh, the bathroom, we have a, a little beachy looking sign, and it's, and it says, "A bad day at the beach is better than a good day at the office." Do you think the person that ever like painted that and took into consideration what a bad day at the beach really is? I don't know. It's like it's almost as bad as having that cat poster in your office is just hang in there friday's coming and he's hanging from a tree you know come on yeah really yeah. but you know if you really think about what a what a, what a bad day at the beach is you know especially here in florida you know a shark bite is a bad day at the beach you know be, being burnt to a crisp and not being able to move for a couple of days is a bad day at the beach it's like when you buy something that has a lifetime warranty they don't tell you whose lifetime and they don't tell you how to uh you know, if something does go wrong, they don't tell you how to, you know, redeem the warranty. Of course not. They'll you be know? out of business by the time you need it. Exactly. Exactly. But wait, there's more. Hmm. Crazy. So, all right. It is Friday. Well, it's actually Monday if you're listening to this on. Um, I'm having a hard time getting in yeah. through the app, dude. Are you Are you on Twitch? Uh, well, no, I'm actually... <clears throat> Nice. I'm actually congested. <laughs> but Old me, man uh, sounds and all. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I restarted it a couple times. I don't know. I need to get one of my kids over here to teach me how to use this thing. It says we're live. Yeah, it, we're live, and I'm, I'm wearing my, my Bad at Life t-shirt, so that's what I'm seeing on Twitch right now. And I'm wearing a so. both Mike shirt. See that? You can buy those on both yes. I was gonna, I was gonna flip that and put that shirt on, but I couldn't find it, so I, ah. I wore my bad life shirt. We're gonna come out with a get off my lawn shirt, a different one. Cool. We have one on the site right ah. now, but yes. a different one. Yes, yes. I was supposed to, I was supposed to update that and and, and make it better. Yes, but I've been busy, I've been busy. I got things to do, dude. What are you eating? I'm eating celery. Celery? Ew. I know, dude. Did Did you know I'm allergic to celery? Are you really? It's mostly water, dude. Yeah. It is. It is. Uh, if, if you have, do you do like do you buy the already cut celery or do you no. buy the stalks? We get the stalks. We cut it ourselves. All right. Next time, next time you pull a brand new stalk out, grab a knife and cut the the root where the the base is of it. Usually, it's it's really dirty and brown. And when uh, back in the day, uh, a lot of the produce was prepped by a person, and that was me. <laughs> and if you cut the butt of a celery off and let it sit for a little bit. A milk sap yeah. will come out of the out of it. I'm allergic to that. Oh, uh, the, the fluid it irritates my skin and it'll give me hives. Well, stay out of Sanford. That used to be the celery capital of the world back in the day. Really? They Why? Because they grew more celery there than anybody else. They, back in the like uh, after the Civil really? War times and so forth. That that was what they That's did. Interesting. Yeah, celery. They have a street there called Celery Avenue. That's where you can buy some good drugs. So I've Did you, <laughs> nice. Did you know that uh, Florida grows more cucumbers than anywhere else in the country? I did not know that. Cats yeah, everywhere are freaking out by that news. Yeah, uh, probably down in Homestead. But yeah, back in the day when I worked in produce in my 20s and 30s, everything was prepped. Everything comes nice and bag now. But like, remember pints of strawberries came in those little plastic containers now i want to be clear here because you said in the 20s and 30s you meant your 20s and 30s not 19, my 20s, 20s and 30s, 30s. yes because i mean you're fucking well, old but you're not that old right <laughs> exactly well yeah these these come in as little little plastic baskets 
and someone someone actually had to put cellophane and a rubber little band green. around yeah, it. Little green baskets, yeah, cellophane and rubber yeah. bands, yeah. yeah. And I was the cellophane and rubber guy, rubber band guy. Uh, celery and lettuce all came, and you had to cut the butt off, soak it in water, and put a rubber band around it or a strap around it. That was me. Grapes never came bagged. You'd have to put them in a bag. Cherries, you had to put them in a bag. Wow. Uh, yeah, and that was that cauliflower. Uh, never came plastic wrapped and real pretty. You had to freaking cut all the greenery off it. Yeah, I was I was that that freaking boy. Well, you know, <laughs> back in the day. You know, celery has negative calories. Correct. It, it takes you more, takes calories, more calories to chew it. To burn it. That's right. And it is of actual, yes. That's I right. learned that from my wife. And if you but put, um, celery in general, I just don't like. I don't like it. If it's in like potato salad, I'll, I'll su- struggle through it. If well, it's in soup, I'll pick it out. Before we went on the air, I was also snacking on some carrots, too. So mm, Carrots. I like carrots with, with ranch dressing or Thousand Island dressing, yeah. which... And then after the purpose of eating after this, I'm going to have some melon cantaloupe and grapes and shit like that. Usually I have ice cream at the end of the evening. I'm trying to slow that down a little bit, you know? Yeah. No, no cantaloupe, green grapes, no red, Why? red apples, no green. What? I don't know. It's all in my head, dude. I know it. No tomatoes, no mayo, no tomatoes, no mayo, no cucumbers, no peaches, no plums, no nectarines, no pears. (laughs) Certain oranges, yes. Like California oranges, yes. Florida oranges, no. You sound like my niece. Uh, She's got allergies to everything, like stuff like that. You know, like she can't eat citrus. She can't be around it, you know, stuff like that. It's kind of crazy. Wow. Yeah. My cousin's like that. She's like allergic to roses and dust and grass and milk. (laughs) Yeah. My cousin. The bad thing about celery is you get all that shit in your teeth. (laughs) <laughs> I hate it when I get shit in my teeth. Tastes tastes like crap too. Yeah, right. All right, let's get let's get going here. How about that? How about that? Now, have you heard about this stuff in New York in the subway? Um, shooting. Like, yeah, shootings and stuff. Yeah. I heard something about. Like a guy, a couple days ago, last week, this past week, goes into New yeah. York subway. He's on a train, sets off a smoke bomb. Then starts nice. arbitrarily just pow, 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 shooting people. Wow. Apparently, yeah. five people are still in the hospital. So they immediately, and the reason why I don't have a picture up yet is for a good reason. Immediately, they put up, I'm sorry, four survivors still in the hospital. No one died. Five people will good. share $50,000 reward for tips that led to the Brooklyn subway shooting suspects arrest. When they initially put out the APB for this guy in all points bulletin, they were looking for a guy that was five foot five, very specific, five foot five. Okay. okay. No more than 170 pounds. Okay. All right. They, little, say little he donned, they say he donned a vest like as if he was a city walker and he had a city worker and he had a mask on. So you couldn't really see his face that well. Okay. Now, have you seen this guy anywhere? I haven't put the picture up yet, but have you seen his face no. anywhere? Okay. This is him. I have. <laughs> ah, that's like when they when they say be on the lookout for a white van yeah well, yeah look now, outside anywhere you are in the, the world look at the dudes around him left now, and right, if you see a white van i look at the arresting officers around him okay i i did a further picture there does that dude there look five five a buck 70 the the cop to his his left looks more uh five five and a buck 70 this guy's yeah. every bit of six feet tall and 250 pounds, dude. Every bit of now, it. Dude. Now, dude, uh, he's more than that. He's probably tipping 280, 290. Well, on another wow. site, I saw his middle name, and he does go by three names like most serial killers okay. do. Right. The uh, the man authorities say was the shooter. This is according to CNN.com, so it must be true. Frank James. Can, can I, can, uh, I was going to guess his name. Oh, I was, shit. I wouldn't, sorry. He has a middle say, name. Like, I can try to find it real quick. Hang on. Let me try to find it. And you can guess the middle name. How about that? Uh, Lee. Tyrone Lee Johnson. It, it's Frank. Frank. Mm-hmm. Frank Lee Johnson. And his wife is Anita Johnson. Now everybody's retracting it. No? You know why it's hard to find this information? He doesn't fit the profile. The day after... 
Biden makes an announcement about ghost guns and about outlawing guns and taking everybody's guns, this happens. I find it very curious timing. And now as I'm trying to look this stuff up, you can't find it anywhere. It's it's out there, but you have to dig. You have to dig. Frank, I know his middle name starts with an R at this point. Let's see. <laughs> Reginald. Frank I'm trying to bring closure Reginald to this because people are screaming Smith. at the podcast right now. <clears throat> I'm looking. Yeah. Still looking. It's like when you used to play video games back in the day. Some of those games took a yeah. long ass time to load and it would just say loading. Right, right. I'm loading. 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 You gotta gotta blow on the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. There we go. <laughs> just blow on it. Stick it back in, you'll be fine. Exactly. Or if it was the disc kind, you'd rub it on your pants. <laughs> You know, we used to yeah. do that in the business we had when we didn't want the boss to see what, what was on camera when we were working, when we were supposed to be working. Yeah. So we would take this, the the DVD thing out of the drive and scratch the shit out of it on the floor and put it back in the DVD thing. Nice, <laughs> so we'd go nice. to watch it and he'd be like, are you guys recording this? This shit's not coming. I don't know. It's that fucking equipment you got, man. That's Hey, you keep right. buying equipment. You're going to keep having problems. You go to Radio Shack for your equipment, you're going to have Radio Shack problems, buddy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, now wow. they're just calling him Frank R. everywhere. I've seen his name before, so it's it's interesting to me. But, yeah, this guy just started killing people, dude. He doesn't fit the profile. They want Frank Robert James. There you go. I found it. Well, that was simple enough. They Robert. wanted so bad for this to be, uh, <laughs> you know, a, 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 a conservative or a red person a gun owner a proud gun owner you know, dude no matter how much you outlaw guns you know who's gonna have guns if you outlaw guns only outlaws it's fucking exactly. common sense man yeah. anyway has nothing to do wow. with guns has to do with this guy being apparently the fbi were looking at him too at one point well the guy right there to his right says fbi on his yeah. jacket yeah they say that uh he didn't enter a plea on violating a law that prohibits terrorism and violence attacks on mass transportation. He was arrested in Manhattan's East Village after calling in a tip to police. He called in <laughs> really himself. Dumb. So he's he's dumb on top of it. Wow. Yeah. The Unreal. Inf the, inf the information provided by the five individuals contributed directly to James' arrest. So that's why these people are going to split 250 grand. Or, yeah, 50 grand each. He fired a gun 33 times, set off smoke grenades, and he shot 10 people. Wow. 19 others suffered oh. injuries and smoke-related inhalation, falling down, or having a panic attack. Four people remained hospitalized as of Thursday and were in stable condition, according to hospital representatives. Go ahead, Mike. Wow. Now this is... <coughs> ah, excuse me. My, my wife is actually watching a program about... Uh... God, Renee Zellweger's in it, and this this woman shot her friend and killed her, but she had previously talked this woman into buying a life insurance policy, and if then something happened to her or something, she was going to take care of her children for for college or whatever. Well, she ends up killing her, and this is a true story, and uh, she keeps talking to the cops. Like digging, you know, hey, what's going on? You know, have you, have you, you know, got any new news? Yeah, you know, they're the not going to say it. we're looking at you. Yeah, the husband, the husband was like being pegged to to being to have done this. Well, yeah, and she, they eventually catch wind of this woman talking so much. She's like, well, maybe it was her that did it. And yeah, so calling in tips and and just being stupid, you know. What was he going to do? do Get arrested, bail out, and go collect this crime tip money? What was the plan? Right. Yeah. But yeah. And this this woman, she actually ended up spending all the money that she collected on this life insurance policy that she was supposed to give to this woman's kids. Yeah. Crazy. So it was, uh, <laughs> you know, if, if you're stupid enough to, to do a crime like this, don't don't be calling the cops and, and giving tips on your, you know, you talk yourself in, you know, you. Ah, it's time whatever. for the second favorite part of my show. Here uh -oh. we are, the alien update. Warning! Aliens approaching! Warning! Biophysical experiments extremely dangerous to Earth people! It's a pretty good robot. He's a little bit of an alien, too, but I think he's mostly. 
closely. He's an alien robot. You could be an alien robot, right? Like, not all robots are domestic. I computed the aliens. They are capable of sinister and dangerous acts. You weird alien man! When we talk about the alien update, of course, we're talking about aliens. We're talking about people like Musk, Gates, Bezos, Zuckerberg, Branson. If these people aren't aliens, they've had direct alien contact with the amount of knowledge, technology, culture change, wealth generating. <coughs> Don't tell me these handful of people are that much smarter than everybody else on the planet, the other 7 billion people. These people got their crap together, and it's quite obvious they have alien intervention. That's what I'm going to call it here. So lately, though, this has turned into the Musk update, yes. and that's okay because he's always yeah. in the news. Here he is again. Right? Here, Musk, Cowboy Musk, Cowboy Elon. He's kind of reacting in a way because the kid who, well, first of all, taking to Twitter private at fifty four twenty should be up to the shareholders. That's that graph. He put on Twitter, I showed you before, 84% of right. 1.7 million people who voted said that the shareholders ought to make that decision on whether he could buy Twitter or not, not the board. But he was laughing there in the previous picture because, well, that popular account on Twitter that tracks Elon Musk jet, the kid from Orlando, the UCF student, Jack Sweeney, uh -huh. 19. They asked him, somebody found him and asked him what they thought about Elon buying Twitter. And he said, oh, no, it's probably good for Twitter, but not good for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk, Musk has offered him money before. I think $5,000 to take it down. Come on, dude. Five grand. Wow. That's like finding yeah. a nickel on the ground for you, dude. Really? Yeah, amazing. Not even a nickel. Musk told him it was a security risk and he didn't want to be shot by a nutcase, according to protocol, which first reported the story. <laughs> so send the nutcase a check. Yeah, there you go, Elon. Yeah, right? that, that'll, that'll make everything go away. The account Elon Musk Jet has 402,000 followers. Sweeney said he started Unreal. the account in June 2020 and uses bots to scrape publicly available air traffic data, thereby alerting the account's followers to the movements of Musk's private jet. Wow. So he opened it up two years ago and we're just we're just kind of hearing about it now. Yeah, well, we were on it a couple months ago. But yeah, I mean, I guess it wasn't really a thing. And you know what's odd? It doesn't appear that it was a right. thing until Elon Musk made it a thing. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, they, he did the best thing. Probably when Elon said something about it, that's when his, his numbers popped. Crazy. So yeah, he needs to say something about both mics. Yes. We need to get him to tweet us. That would, that's awesome. That's what we need. You know what? Hang on here. Let's tweet him now. There's what the page looks like, okay? Elon Musk Jet. There's a picture of it here on twitch.tv slash both mics. And our next story here is about Twitter and about this whole thing. Apparently, yeah. the Twitter board has adopted what they call a poison pill. Okay. They've adopted a limited-duration shareholder rights plan, often called a poison pill, a day after billionaire Elon Musk offered to buy the company for $43 billion, a company announced Friday. This is according to CNBC.com, so it must be true. Such a move is a common way to fend off a potential hostile takeover by diluting the stake of the entity eyeing the takeover. <laughs> The board not voted unanimously to adopt the plan. I don't think that's allowed. I don't know what the poison pill is, but they're basically saying they're going to drag down the company and make it worthless and then pick it back up again. Well, let me know when it's on the on the, on the freaking downswing. That's where I'm at. <laughs> let me know where it's going <coughs> to bottom out. I'll, I'll be watching. Be exactly. sitting here ready to click yeah. a button. You know, I, I look at, uh, you know, I'm, I'm big on going on cruises and all that stuff. I remember uh, a few months ago looking at, like, cruise stock. And when everything shut down in, what, March of 2020? Yeah. The freaking cruise line stock bottomed out. It yeah. went, like, to a quarter of what it was worth. And, like, wow. now it's back up where it was. So I was like, oh, man, another missed opportunity. 
In a live stream interview at the TED 2022 conference in Vancouver on Thursday, Musk laid out his vision for making Twitter's algorithms more publicly accessible and limiting content moderation. He also acknowledged he's not sure if he'll be able to buy Twitter, though he said he does have sufficient assets to fund the deal if accepted. Despite right. his fortune, Musk has much of his assets tied up in equity in his companies, including Tesla, meaning he'll likely have to liquidate or borrow against his assets to come up with a large sum. I don't think that's going to be a problem for somebody to lend him money. Right. Mike, yeah. he's not um, going to come, come across your mortgage desk. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, so uh, he's got all that money, but it's all tied up. It's He doesn't have liquid that amount. Crazy oh, stuff, man. Uh, lost you. No, I'm here. <clears throat> All right, so the same guy here that we're talking about, Musk. Don't forget, yeah. he's got Norlink going on. Remember what Norlink right. is? Norlink and hyper hyper tube and suction tube, whatever that thing is in Vegas. Well, no, Norlink is this thing. That's the brain thing. You put that yeah. thing in your head. Is that Bezos? Is he using Bezos as a guinea pig? I guess. This is a crude right. drawing here. This is a crude, uh, a crude, you know, like a of what it is. It looks like I he's like got a barcode. USB charger going on there and a battery in his head. It says Neuralink back of his head. It's just a model. Musk is pictured there. But the and the reason why I have this is he plans on implanting these chips into people's heads this year. Go for it. Are you going to sign up? <laughs> yeah, no, not not this year. Not this year. There's I'm another not, picture I'm not, of Musk. I don't buy the first model. There's another picture real close to the head there. Here's another picture. That's about the size of it. Looks like the size of about a quarter with a string hanging out of it. <laughs> okay. The chip, which is aimed at quadriplegics and those who have suffered brain or spinal injuries, would enable people to transmit their thoughts via computers and devices. Wow. See, that's dangerous for me. Right? That'd be like reading someone's mind. Well, don't they say like men think about sex like every 18 seconds or eight seconds or something like that? Those those days are gone. Is it going to pick <laughs> up on that for people? No, I'm just saying. Probably, you know. I don't see why it wouldn't if it, it would, if it would on other things. The electrodes that compromise the Neuralink will be used to read electrical signals generated by the many neurons in the brain. It can also serve as a link between the human brain and technology. Boy, 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 boy. So what? When you get to your house, you're going to you're going to dump all your stuff. You took a bunch of pictures today by blinking your eyes. So you're going to unload the pictures onto your desktop when you get home. You're going to plug yourself into your computer. Right? Wouldn't that be amazing? Would it be like 5G or 4K? <laughs> What's the resolution on that? Well, maybe my sister will be on to something like this. She might be able to use something like this. I'm going to talk to her soon anyway. I'm going to see her on Sunday, and I'm going to talk to her about something else. I'll tell you about later off the air that I found exciting. But um, this is where we're headed, dude. They're talking about AI interfacing with humans. This is what it is. This is what Neuralink is. This is what it's about. They're saying it's going to change humanity forever. According to techiefiction.com, you're on vacation yeah. in a small village in France, but you don't speak a word of French. Imagine if you could download a program into your brain and converse with locals, and what if you could later remember the trip in perfect detail? Wow. So would this, would this teach you French, or would it interfere with your brain and make you speak French? It would inter interface with your brain and make you speak French. So you would think of coffee, and it would say the French word for coffee, whatever that is, cafe, I don't know. It would probably be cafe or something like that. Elon Musk wow. says you will even be able to store your memories as a backup and then download them into a robot body. Oh, jeez. So this is how yeah. you live forever through AI. It's a brain-machine interface, or BMI. <coughs> I thought that meant body mass index. BMI, a device that connects your brain to a computer. But before chasing these futuristic goals, the startup is focusing on one thing, ending human suffer suffering. They say all yeah. of our senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, smell, 
are electrical signals sent by neurons to your brain, and sometimes the signals aren't wired correctly. So they're saying the immediate use for this is going to be to treat people, paralyze people who can't walk, Alzheimer's, insomnia, depression, blind people, deaf people, mutes. Wow. It's crazy stuff, dude. Yeah. Maybe you or I. I don't. I don't know if it's gonna be you or I, but maybe one of our kids will will live like a couple hundred years old or a thousand years old or something through shit like this. I think we might be right. too old for this. Yeah, I, I I could see how it would work in- as you sleep, possibly by wearing a nightcap, according to to Musk. Although it may wow. not exactly look like what they're showing us here. You know, there's they've had the prototype since like 2019, so they've changed it up, and you know. <laughs> now here, don't don't mean to laugh, but say something like this is is keeping you your vision or keeping your hearing or you will be able to to make you know have mobility, and the battery goes dead. Like at nine o'clock, do you turn into a pumpkin and yeah. just go deaf or you fall on the ground? No, it's dead. <clears throat> That's what I'm thinking as well. Yeah, party tricks. Nice. <laughs> This is crazy, dude. So the solution is to hook up the human brain and AI and create a symbiotic relationship. Symbiosis, of course, refers to the art of living together. We see this in nature with mutually beneficial relationships. See, no, somebody's going to use this for the wrong shit. They're going to have an army full of people, you know? Yeah, Yeah, this is going to be bad. It's like the the Clone Wars and Star Wars, you know? Like, they have all these, these stormtroopers, but, you know... They're, they're all like clones and they've just created people for that one particular reason for to have an army. So, yeah, that, that was kind of scary. Yeah, to have this can make you a, superhuman, you know? Yeah. Yep, wow. yep, yep. Yeah. Have better hearing, better sight, having all that knowledge. <laughs> I, I knew about the, the quantum computer thing years ago and I was like, oh, my God, it's like the, the potential there is is unlimited. Well, you know, you, go ahead. <clears throat> I say you to, to like to have this thing and you're walking down the street and it tells you, hey, you know, watch out for that guy. He's wanted in Utah for, you know, a triple homicide, you know, to, you know, it's, you Suppo- know whatever. Supposedly the Starlink is the model that was let out of the cat was let out of the bag on some uh, areas of the Internet that not everybody is familiar with or can access. I'll just say I stumbled across something and a guy more or less came right out and this guy used to be in the in the white house i'll just say this he was in a close circle in the white house and this whole quantum thing with musk and starlink the u.s government is funding that musk is the u.s government and department of defense's largest customer he gets the most money out of any one unit they and this is all dark money you can't see you can't track it you don't know about it but musk gets a shit ton of money from the government to develop this starlink and it's going to end up providing free internet access to everyone throughout the world so they're saying everyone will have internet access throughout the world at no cost wow well i think that's only because they want to put these chips in your head and keep track of everybody they want to keep track of your movement you want to keep track of your spending. You want to keep track of your social score. Make sure you didn't say anything that made anybody upset on Twitter. Then all that comes into play. And if they disagree with what you say, or you've already used all your carbohydrate credits at the at the Win Dixie, and you're not allowed to buy any more carbs, you can only buy protein. They're going to cut your cash off because it's all digital. Everything's going to be digital. They'll be able to not only find you, they'll be able to tell you what to do, and subconsciously, subliminally, like. They're saying with Neuralink here, they can make the Neuralink stimulate certain things in your brain, make you do something. Maybe they'll make you go kill somebody. No? You're not buying any of this? Yeah, no, no. Well, you know, it, it's all, it's all, it's plausible. You're, you're the same possible? guy. You're the same guy that if I went to in 2019 and told you in 2020 the entire world was going to shut down, everyone was going to have to wear a diaper on their face, and no one was going to be allowed to go to work for a period of time, what would you have said? Fuck you. That'll never happen. Fuck. No way. No way. Okay. So this is one example. 
So why can't why can't this be true? It, it can, like I said, it's plausible, but it's not possible. It's happening. We're on the road to it right now. <coughs> it's happening. All right. So enough of Neuralink, enough, enough of Musk, Musk. This is a comet. It's 4 billion years old, and it's 80 wow. miles wide, and it's heading for Earth. Okay. The ancient comet, this is according to BGR.com, the ancient comet believed to be 4 billion years old is headed towards Earth. The massive comet is at least 80 miles across, making it twice the width wow. of Rhode Island. It's currently speeding towards the Earth at 22,000 miles per hour. The comet in question is traveling toward Earth at 22,000 miles an hour. It's hurling inward from the edge of our solar system. Luckily, we won't have to worry about the comet impacting the Earth. Astronomers say it will never pass closer than 1 billion miles. Well, then why are you making a big deal about it? It's not going to get Right? Me. How is it news? So what? there's a lot of things hurtling towards Earth. 1 billion, yeah, 1 billion miles. That's further than the distance between here and Saturn. I can't see Saturn. Right. Saturn doesn't affect me. Right? Well, you can see it. It doesn't affect you, though. Well, I don't know. Maybe it does. I actually, I saw Saturn through a telescope on like someone's back porch once, and I thought that was amazing. Did you ever see Uranus through a telescope? I, I did. I did. It was frightening. Nice. Yes, my uh, my doctor took pictures of my colonoscopy, and that's how I saw my anus, Uranus, the anus. <laughs> I uh, I went in for one, and. Uh... You know, they have to, like, you know, knock you out and all that stuff. I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah. I go in, and the doctor wasn't in the room yet, but there were six hot chick nurses all there. You okay, serious? roll up on the table. Okay, we're going to put this in. I'm like, really? Is this like a penthouse forum story? Do I need to write somebody about this right, or what? Right. <laughs> am, I, am I getting charged extra for this? Wow. Is there a videotape of this? Yeah, I remember they, they like whatever they put you an IV or something, and I remember just like sitting there like hanging out, and the nurse comes in, she's like, well, "Why are you fighting this?" I'm like, "What are you talking about? You know, I'm just sitting here, you know, like when's this stuff supposed to take effect?" And then I I woke up like I guess hours later or whatever. Didn't or know anything later. that happened, right? Yeah. Totally blackout. Yeah, and then I, you know, then I was like all groggy and whatnot, and the, the nurse was being. Like a different nurse was being weird. I'm like, huh? What? No. What? Whatever. It was. It was weird. But yeah, it, it was weird. Like you know, you you would think you'd wake up and you'd be like feeling something. Like, oh, something feels weird. But no, nothing felt weird. Here, and, he, yeah. Here's another. The picture people were just put, being weird. To put things in perspective of this comet here, they're saying it would weigh five hundred thousand tons, eighty miles across. Again, not a story. But a story. They want to. The sky's falling. Oh my God! The Earth is ending. It's climate change. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> anything to make that happen. That's what they're doing. That's what they're yeah, doing. anything to fill freaking column space. All right. Well, I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's a big thing out right now about birds and bird flu. Okay. This is according to CBS in Minnesota. Minnesota CBS Local dot com. Take okay. down your bird feeders. It's time to stop spreading of the bird flu, the University of Min Minnesota Raptor Center says. Because the science is unclear on the role of songbirds in its current H5N1 outbreak, once considered as not to encourage birds to gather together at places such as bird feeders or bird baths. Now, do you, do you have a bird feeder or a bird bath in, in your on your property? No. No, we used to have one at. We just relocated the the uh, right, both right. my studios, but at the old studios we had that. But no, not yet. Anyway, okay. not here. Okay. I ask you a question. Yes. Did you have a habit of hanging out at the bird feeder or the bird bath in your yard? No. Okay. Yeah, me neither. We we have both on on the property. Well, here's and where the I, concern. I, is. I don't hang out. Here's where the concern yeah, I, is, dude. Okay. The poultry industry. Now, whether this okay. is a hoax or not, whether this is another Corona COVID bullshit thing or it's a real thing, whether it is or not, it's going to affect poultry prices. Both chicken and eggs are going to skyrocket in price here shortly. 
Because they're going to go uh, in and they're going to do like they did with the mad cow thing in Europe a couple years ago. Okay, I know right. you have a half million cattle here. Slaughter them all. We can't use them. Burn the bodies. Right, like like the whole citrus canker thing. Like every yeah. everything, citrus canker, and people just wanted to get rid of their crops. And that so, was the excuse they used. So what you're paying for eggs and chicken is going to skyrocket. It's going to go up higher than gas. Watch. It's crazy, dude. So go buy chicken now. If you like chicken and you want to have chicken for the next couple months, go buy it now and stick it in your freezer. Yeah, uh, whatever. Well, you're not going to be buying chicken then. Do you eat a lot of chicken? Eh, I, we Maybe once a week. Maybe. Okay. But hey, Easter eggs. Yes. Did uh did you and the missus color Easter eggs this year? Uh no, no, we didn't color oh, no? Easter eggs, no. Well, well all the kids well, are gone. We're here discussing all we're here discussing the world and, and making things better for everyone. Yes. The boys are coloring Easter eggs. That's awesome. That's great. I miss that stuff. I like that stuff. Did you like doing that stuff? No. <laughs> you didn't you didn't get out the little mugs and the vinegar and a little holder and boil the eggs and then sit down and draw with a wax crayon. Yeah, there was a time for it, but yeah, not not my not my favorite pastime. You are the get off yeah. my lawn guy, aren't you? Jesus. Yeah, and plus I, I I would eat a hard boiled egg, but I wouldn't eat the yolk part. That's disgusting. Nice. So only only the white part. Oh, I, uh, very nice, Mike. As I put up a picture of an African American man, you say only the white part. Very good, Mike. Appreciate that. South Carolina Death inmate row. Richard Moore, death row inmate. Moorhead. He picks firing okay. squad instead of electric chair. So, I, well, yeah, the electric chair would hurt. I didn't know they had that option anymore. Firing squad. Yeah. Well. Don't they like okay? You now you're showing a picture of, of six men all firing a, a weapon in one direction. Yes. Don't they like have one guy with a bullet and the other guys have blanks? Well, so I've heard those... that before too. But what if he misses? Right. Exactly. Everybody's got to reload. So anyway, this guy yeah, Richard. You know why they do that? No. So no so one could the... have it on their conscience. Exactly for the psyche of the of the six gentlemen, they don't know which. Of them shot the guy. And that little bit of a doubt leads to right. being yeah. okay. Oh, it wasn't me. I'm yeah, just yeah, doing yeah, my yeah. job. I didn't, I didn't kill him. It's just my job. Yeah. Yeah. The the the, uh, the Nazis, the SS, they were all just doing their job. Mm. Right. Your oven. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Weinstein, oven for two, right this way. Come on. Right this way. Nice. Yeah, nice. Nice. Anyway, this guy so right here. What, what, did Moore, what did Mr. Moorhead do? Yeah, Mr. Moore here. He's 57. He's the first state prisoner wow. to face the choice of execution methods after a law went into effect last year, making electrocution the default and giving inmates the option to face three prison workers with rifles instead. Moore has spent more than two <laughs> decades on death row after being convicted of a 1999 killing of a convenience store clerk, James Mahoney, in Spartanburg, South Carolina. If executed as scheduled on april 29th he would be the first person put to death in the state since 2011 and the fourth in the country to die by firing squad in nearly half a century wow that's can't they crazy. just give him the blue juice that's just crazy dude yeah just Unreal. give me the shot and make me go to sleep that would be better Unreal. I mean, I don't know. Is that cruel and unusual punishment too? Getting the shot? Is that like putting Windex in your veins? Or <laughs> I don't know. You know, it, it hasn't happened to me, and, and nobody I know has had to go through it either. The last guy to die by firing squad was Ronnie Lee Gardner. Again, with the three names. The three names. This guy yep. here is Richard Bernard Moore. This other guy, the last one to die by execution by a firing squad was Ronnie Lee Gardner in 2010 by a five person firing squad in Utah. Utah. Moore's attorneys have asked the state Supreme court to delay his death while another court determines if either available method is cruel and unusual punishment. They had 20 years to do this. <clears throat> they give you a choice and they've, they've taken 11 years to figure out a better way of doing it. Freaking crazy dude. Well, yeah, Again, I'm going to bring the show right to its breaks again. Here's a dolphin that washed up on shore. Yep. It's according to New York Post. 
These are, this is in Texas. New York Post reporting on this in Texas. A sick dolphin has died after washing up on shore at a Texas beach where several people tried to ride it back to sea. They say that that could have been the stress that, I like obviously the dolphin was in distress and not, not doing well, and that's why it got beached. But right. they were trying to take pictures and ride on it and touch yeah, it. like, hey! Yeah, dude, you can't do that. Here, yeah, look. <coughs> look at all these people gathered around this dolphin in like one foot of water. There's like 12 people wow. around it. Yeah, you got to touch it. Let's be cool. Yeah. Unreal. That's like when we went yeah, fishing it, before. I mean, we're fishing the, off the pier. My stepson pulls up a shark, and the lady's like, oh, can I pet it? And my son's like, no, get away from me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And, and that's probably what everybody was thinking. Oh, look, a dolphin. They, they breathe air. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine yeah, here yeah. on the beach. Look, he's not going to hurt us. It Come won't on, die. let's go pet him. Right. Ooh, come here. Get the toddler who's been picking her nose all day. Put Stick your finger in his blowhole. Here you go, right here. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, that's what yeah. people are. This was in, uh, this was at uh, Quintana Beach. Do you know where that is? No, actually, I, I, I looked it up and I was like, okay, I'm not sure exactly where. My, my daughter lives on Quintana Road in, in freaking Missouri, but uh, I've never heard of Quintana in texas <coughs> i'm sure it's along the gulf so nice, anyway right? if, if you're listening or watching this don't do this don't don't be that person be the person that keeps everybody away from the dolphin call authorities let them try to work something out for the dolphin they'll get sea world out there <laughs> with a rescue unit right. and hopefully everything will be all right but you touching the dolphin or trying to force it back in you're you're, you're killing it you're making it stress worse stop stop all right quintana Ooh, it is it is south of Houston, but west of Galveston. Wow, they're right there in that Hurricane Alley. Yeah, right, right up that road there, kind of by Freeport. But yeah, to the west of Gal or southwest of Galveston, which is yeah, you know, so not any area that I've ever visited. You know, if you get caught visited- doing something like this. They call. They say this type of harassment causes undue stress to wild dolphins, is dangerous for the people who interact with them, and is illegal, punishable by fines and jail time if convicted. Yeah, yeah. They're they're. It's like a federal law of some sort uh, to be interfering with wildlife. It's crazy. It's crazy. We went to the we we went to uh uh one of those aquarium type places. I want to say it was the Georgia Aquarium, and like. Dolphins are very sexual. I don't know if you know that. And sometimes they're, it doesn't matter whether they're male or female. They, 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 and a couple of them had their wieners out on full display and were trying to get with other dolphins and all the kids were just watching and laughing. It was an uncomfortable, (laughs) hilarious 30 minutes or so. We stood there and watched this. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Not a fan. I I haven't been privy of that and I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't know if you looked at the notes, but if he didn't, guess what this guy did? Um, I thought about putting him in to get off my lawn, but this guy's just a, a nasty fucker. He looks like a dumb motherfucker. Uh, what did he do? He 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 diddled a kid. Arizona man arrested. This is according to USA.com, USAToday.com. Arizona man arrested after 183 frozen animals found in his freezer, including dogs wow. and birds. Michael, what Pat- kind of freezer does he have? Does he have like a walk-in? Michael Patrick Turland, again with the three names, was charged with 94 counts of animal cruelty with dogs and rabbits among the animals he kept frozen. In an interview with authorities, what? Turlin confessed to freezing some of the eight, 183 animals while they were still alive. Oh, wow. I was going to say, are they roadkill? But no, he's throwing live animals in there. Turlin's arrest came after an animal welfare check on April 3rd. According to a police report, a woman had complained that Turlin agreed to breed her snakes before they vanished. That's when a property owner of Turlin Homes... Turlin's home informed the woman of the frozen animals in the garage. Authorities eventually made their way to the garage freezer where they found dead birds, dogs, lizards, mice, snakes, turtles, rabbits, and rats. 
Turlin's motive for freezing the animals remains unclear. Authorities were searching for his wife, Brooklyn Beck. Wow. This freezing he's already admitted that he was freezing them while they were alive. I can't imagine being frozen alive, dude. Dude. It's, yeah. You ever you ever fall through the ice on a lake? That's cold enough. Yeah, I bet. Well, I, I I don't think I'd really I mean maybe my foot went in a little bit or something. My whole body didn't yeah. go in, you know, that was bad enough. Yeah, no. Don't don't ride your bike on the ice in the springtime. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's not good. All right. So who would have thought this, okay? I I, I, I would have never have thought this, okay? This is a picture of a hot glue gun. Dollar Tree Correct. recalls more than one million hot glue guns due to fire and burn hazards. It's it's dollar twenty five tree. Yeah, are you, you mean to tell me the hot glue gun I bought at the China the China Dollar Dump? You mean to tell me that it it's not working right? It could catch fire. Might catch fire. There's, there's no there's no regulator on the heat. Yeah, um, that looks like a very plasticky, not cool. Hot glue gun. It's UL listed. It shouldn't do that. That's the seal of approval, right? The UL. It's probably the components are UL listed, but together they shouldn't be. It, there's about one million twenty-five thousand that are being recalled, in addition to twenty-one thousand nine hundred that were sold in Canada. The recall date is April fourteenth. So when you're listening to this, it's already the remedy they're looking for is a refund. So. Burn six dollars in gas to go back to the dollar store to get your dollar twenty five back. Yeah, you can get a refund or exchange it for an ovulation kit. <laughs> yes, yes. Or a pregnancy test. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because nothing says you care about your child like the dollar twenty five you spent on the pregnancy test. Unreal. How do so, you yeah. trust that? Um, How do you know that that's <clears throat> true? How do you go and go? Oh God, I'm glad we're not pregnant. Or oh my God, I'm so glad we're pregnant. How do you know for sure at the dollar store pregnancy test? Come on. Right. Yeah. Do, do you trust it? You know, it's like, is it like a, like a, a woman on your GPS? Do you really trust what she's telling you? Nice. No, so, I trust yeah. the one that's sitting next to me telling me not to listen to the GPS. <laughs> um, yeah. Take your dollar 25, uh, dollar, dollar 25 tree, freaking whatever that thing is, hot glue gun and throw it in the trash. Right. Yeah. And go, and go to a real store and get a real one for yeah. buck fifty. This is called a Crafters Square brand glue gun. Crafters. Dollar Tree okay. has received seven reports of electrical malfunctions when using the glue gun. Seven out of a million. This is really not bad. Including four reports of fire and one report of skin. Now, what's to say that some of those aren't because of stupidity? People are stupid, right? That's Mikeism. What number two? Yeah, I was going to I was just going to say, you know, that that percentage is probably people being dumb about it. You yeah. know, here, let me put this hot glue on your arm. Tell me if it burns. Oh, it burns you. Oh, it's defective. Here, let me put this hot glue gun next to this gasoline can. <laughs> yes, let's see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> Unreal. I touched it. Oh, it's hot. I burned myself. Have you ever bought anything at the dollar store that you really treasure and like? <laughs> <laughs> um, or is it just shit like for the season, the holidays, maybe a yeah, spatula? Dude, um, the, the first thing I'm thinking of is like some of the kind of cool trinket stuff that you put on the Christmas tree. Like we we have two Christmas trees. We have one in the front room, one in the back room. And one is like a, a traditional one that has all different color lights and all different color ornaments and th stuff. And then we have one in the back, which I think is cool just to have red and gold. So the tinsel's red and gold, the ornaments are red and gold, and some of the ornaments for that tree we got at Dollar Twenty Five Tree. Why not? And they're they're red and gold. Yeah. So yeah, that that's the only thing I can think of going there for, and like sometimes Brenda will go there for like candy for the boys for school or something. I don't know. I, I can't think of anything else that we would buy at the Dollar Twenty Five Tree. You, you know what I used to love to do. I used to what? love to take Trey when he was like four or five to the dollar store and tell him, pick out whatever he wants. That was huge, right? Dad's going to buy me right. whatever I want. The, the, the exactly. You know, he's not putting it together. Yeah. He was four or five. I also, like, one year for Christmas, he did all, I let him do his own Christmas shopping. And, okay. and he, 
bought something for everybody at the dollar store. Like the uncle's got this little screwdriver set. The niece has yeah. got these little barrettes or whatever. Yeah, he did his own Christmas shopping that way. It was great. And Jennifer got a wall calendar. Yes, yes. <laughs> From last yeah. year with cats on it. <laughs> yep. I often wonder why don't why don't they have Chinese New Year calendars? All well, shit's made in China anyway, right? Right. Yeah. All right. We are quickly approaching the end here. We're just under Uh-oh. eight minutes. But the something okay. you don't see every day that I have, the video clip, is about three minutes yeah. long. So it's okay that we okay. have a little, a little, little too much time here. Take, take a nap. Now, this involves a Guinness World Record. Now, as okay. usual, Mike, you haven't seen this ahead of time, so I'm no, going to pop what? this video up, and we're going to have you describe All it right. to everybody, okay? All right. I'll tell you what it is as soon as it pops up, but you describe uh, what's going say, on, okay? I see it's pitch black. Is it like inside someone's hang on. closet? No, hang on. Oh, okay. Here we go. Hold on. This okay. is a Guinness World Record for changing a tire on a moving car. What? Go ahead. Describe what you're seeing here. Okay. Uh, looks like a little chopped vehicle it actually looks like a morgan and it's doing a donut the guy just jumped out of the vehicle to get a yeah. drill now he's back on the outside of the car hanging on as the car's doing donuts in a studio it looks like a studio audience in a studio yeah it looks like the who wants to be a millionaire set it's burning rubber no smoke just burning Going rubber. In the now circle. he's hanging up hanging off the uh the running board holding on to the door with a uh a, 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 a pneumatic tool taking off the bolts of the front left and now tire. He has it, and now he has it so that the passenger or left front tire is off the ground and he's pulling the tire off. Mind you, the car is doing donuts this entire time and he's hanging yes. on. Just pulled and off the tire. The, pulled off the tire. Is he going to put the same tire Jumps on off. or is he going to switch? Nope. His, yeah, hops off the car and the car is on three wheels spinning in circles. He dropped off the tire. I guess he's going to grab a new tire. <laughs> yeah, this is punches. All right. God, he had a... I can't even, I could barely get the tire back on the car when it's not moving. Right. Let alone. Right. Here he's he going to line up all tire. those holes. He's, yeah. he's rolling the tire over and picking it up, and he's going to jump back, jump on, the back on the car. There we go. And he's going to line up. It's got the tire that he's putting on is yeah. not any better than the tire that was on the car. Yeah, right. All right. Now he is, I guess he got it lined up. He's putting lug nuts back on. Wow. I guess this is a Guinness Book of World's Record TV show. I guess. His name is Terry Grant. He's a stunt driver. It's written on the back of his jumpsuit here. Guinness World Records okay. all over the car. Not sure. The I was going to mention that he looks like he looks like Putin a little bit. Looks like an old Deuce Coupe or something. It's a two door car with a big grill on the yeah. front. Looks like a like well, I can say a, Mor- a Morgan, but probably okay. not. So, so now actually, he's, you know what? he's got you know the what? tire okay. back on. He's he's got the drill in his hand. He's drilling the bolts back in now. He probably did like he noticed... did in NASCAR where they they glue on the bolts on the outside so they stay. Yeah. Yeah. Now here's here's the thing. If you look at the bottom of the car, the car is actually pivoting. It's spinning in circles, but it's pivoting on some sort of jack. Uh, yeah, you but that jack it? seems to be moving. Have you seen it? Well, yeah, it's it's, it's sliding around. I guess that's supposed to help keep it stable in one spot, but keep it stable in one spot, and we'll keep that one tire off the ground. Yeah, that's probably what it is. That's what he did with the drill first off to jack that side up without a jack. Okay. That's what that was. But now okay. you see he's pulled that back in, and it's not there. Now he's climbing back in the car as the car still yep. continues to do donuts with the new front left tire on it. Fastest time to change a wheel on a spinning car, 3 minutes and 10 seconds. Mike, are you going to try this with your Mustang? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to head outside right now <laughs> and give it a shot. <laughs> I can't change a regular tire in 3 minutes and 10 seconds, and this guy did it on a car doing donuts in front of the world on TV. Right now, speaking of changing car tires, did, did when Trey got his, his driver's license, did you make sure he was able to change the tire? Oh yeah. Did dude. you do? Oh yeah. yeah be, open the hood. Oh yeah. Make sure be, he knew where. Before he was allowed to take the car on his own, he had to show me that he could check the oil, he could change the tire, he could put gas in the car, he could diagnose a handful of things. 
So a yeah. couple months after he had the car, it's a Friday night, and we're wrapping up the show here shortly here. But uh, it was a Friday night. He was at a football game at the high school, and 1030 came, and the phone rang. And it was Trey. And he's like, hey, just want to let you know I got a flat tire. I'm like, all right. Is that all? <laughs> he goes, well, uh, I go, I thought you had to change that. Aren't you going to change it? He goes, oh, I guess so. Okay, thanks, bye. And Lisa's yeah. looking at me like, Really? You're, you're going to let that go just like, so I got to get out of bed. I got to drive down to the school. By the time I got there, he just got done doing the, putting the spare tire on. So right, I was proud of him. But yeah, you did the same thing or what? Um, believe it or not, no. I, and, and the thing is, I, I knew it was something I should have done, you know, especially having one of each, having a boy and a girl. Yeah. Um, that, you know, there was certain things that they should know before, like where's the distributor cap and things like that. Well, I didn't get all uh, technical on his ass. I mean, yeah. he could figure that you shit know, out where's, later. Where's the battery? What, you yeah. know, this, that. Right. But the, the change tire thing is something that, you know, I, I definitely should have taken care of. And, and I, I think I meant to because I knew better. Right. But everything I've ever learned, I've always learned on my own. You know, well, it, there you my, go. my dad, my dad did teach me how to drive <laughs> um, in a, in a, parking lot where he worked and uh and really that's it like I, I kind of knew everything else right you know i was always a a hands-on kind of guy and just knew how to do shit uh so i i didn't need to be taught anything well so. i put i gave him steps when i was teaching trey how to drive the first step was get in the car adjust your mirrors walk around the car right. first make sure you're good the tires are good nothing out of the ordinary get in the car adjust the seat adjust your mirrors and uh, right. then Lisa was out there watching what I was teaching him. And I said, now, what's the next rule? And he looks at me and her and he goes, secure your beer. I'm like, yes, correct. Secure your beer. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> yeah. Both my kids learned to drive in a Disney World parking lot. Hey, there you go. There you, they yeah. could learn how to drive in Disney World with those little cars on that little track there. Right? Right. Yeah. Now, hey, we are at that time. We are at a time already. I want to give shout outs yep. to my man Gino Losi. Go check him out. If you want to catch monster fish while you're in Florida, anywhere in Florida, check out Gino Losi all over on the socials. Check out my man Dustin Levine at the Melon Patch Theater in Leesburg. Donate some money, go see a show, buy some advertising, help help them out. They do a great thing. And check out my friend Night Fan Stan at Jet Set Printing for all your printing needs in Central Florida. Mike, shouting out to anybody. You are on mute, so there you go. No shout out for you. I am, I am. So happy Easter, everyone. Happy yes. Good Friday. Yes. And uh, yeah, ciao. All right, we'll see you on the flip side.